Hi, this is Dan from OnlineBaseCourses.com. Hope you're doing really well. Now, what I'm going to do in this video is give you 20 tips that you can use straight away. So I really think it's a good idea to save this video because I'm going to put a bunch of links into the description below where you can kind of go into a lot of this, these ideas in slightly more depth, but I'll show you a lot of stuff right now. First of all is to focus on technique. Now I think that's the number one stumbling block at the beginning when you're playing bass is just really, really wanting to play stuff but your fingers and your hands just not doing what you want to do. So really it's just getting a few exercises together and being really, really slow and methodical with making sure that you've got, got the mechanics of this down. So just very quickly with the fretting hand, we've got thumb behind the neck, fingers curled, playing one finger per fret kind of on the fingertips. Plucking hand, I'm alternating fingers. I've got this one exercise which is a little, little boring, but it does, does work to get your hands going. If you go fret one, two, three, four, let's go G string, and then you just move up every time with the same pattern, a bit like this. You can go all the way to the 12th fret or stop there, come backwards. You can do different finger permutations. Like I said, doesn't sound great, but at least that's getting your fingers together. You could use scales. It doesn't really matter. The point is that you're specifically working on getting your fingers moving quickly, doing this every day so that you build up stamina, strength and accuracy. That's really, really important for when you actually play bass lines. Do you ever actually think about holding the bass properly? Now look, my fretting hand is is away from the bass and nothing's happening, it's not falling down because I've got a point on my leg there against my body and my wrist just on the top here and the bass is going nowhere. I could use a strap, but I'm, I don't have to. If I move the bass slightly away from the back of my chair and slightly up like this, the bass is in a perfect position for me to access the whole neck. One thing I see a lot is maybe the necks down there and people reaching for the neck down there or coming across the neck and just not being able to go very far because you're sort of bumping into your own body really. So if you move the base out a bit and up, you've got just access to the whole neck. And so I think that's a really important thing is how you actually hold the base. Of course, use a strap if you if you want. That's absolutely fine. But really do think about that. I've got 20 tips for you here. Like I said, save the video, watch in your own time, get these tips together. But tip three is really not to give yourself too much to learn because it can be a bit overwhelming, can't it? And what I want you to do is just pick pick one thing. I mean, you could pick it from this video. I've got some tips later that you might just want to take one and work on that. And be methodical about this, you know, have a little bit of a game plan. Let's say I want to work on finger style. I want to work on getting my fingers coordinated. Just do that until you get it. Don't just keep going, moving around to lots of different topics and skimming the surface of each of them. Technique, like I said, I started off with that. So why don't you start with that, getting your fingers really quick, strong, accurate. Now, two of the most important tools you're going to need as a musician is to have a great ear and to, especially on bass, have great groove and timing. So I have a free ebook for you and I've put the link in the description below and that's got these intervals on them. And an interval is just the distance between two notes. So let me show you. I'm just going to make this up. But if I go to C, third fret of the A string, you have an octave. And on the bass guitar, it's just two frets in this direction and two strings downwards and you get an octave and I really know what that is going to sound like. You have a minor seventh, which is two frets lower than that, and a fifth, which is two frets across from the lowest note, the C, and one string up. So, loads of bass lines use just those notes, and that's just an example of a handful of intervals, right? But there are many others, but what I've done and what many bass players do is just use patterns and link that shape to the sound in your ear, the fifth. It's like Star Wars. These are 
these same intervals happen over and over again. So strengthening your ear in that way is really going to help you pick out bass lines and jam, improvise, make up lines on the spot. This is two tips in one really because working on your groove is a really essential thing. I've got a drum beat here. I'll just show you an example of me playing a bass line to a drum beat and this is something I might do you know, every day just to work on the timing. If you're quite confused as to where to start, I mean, you've got these tips, but I really recommend just making a list of your of your favourite songs and having those as a target. You know, make sure it's not absolutely too difficult because if your favourite song is just way, way too difficult to play, that's going to demotivate you. So pick something that you like that's simple and try and figure it out by ear, or I suppose you can go onto YouTube and, and get tab and things like that, but I really, really, really urge you to, to heed tip four which was to use your ear and to figure out these things yourself it'll be difficult at first but if you could just get a tiny section and do that it'll get much easier i've got a link to a spotify playlist of the stuff i'm working on you can check out but you know just to give you an example you can get many things from every single baseline you can possibly imagine and i was just thinking about this what shall i show you and you know i've got uh, a, a song i play often is forget you by CeeLo green and pina paladino's on that and there's that middle bit, which is really great. Um, there's a little fill in it. Which is really quite unusual. I hadn't really played in that way before. And it was like hammer on. And then it'll pull up a little slide from that fifth fret to the fourth fret. And it's quite hard to time. But, you know, having listened to that, and it took me a while to just, you know, zero in on that bit and listen to it, I sort of took that idea and I use that sort of that thing a lot you know? and that's the thing you listen to your favorite tunes because you want to be able to play bass lines but also to extract little bits and once you work on your ear you'll be able to hear and understand why a certain bass player did a certain thing and so just get a massive list make a playlist on YouTube or Spotify or, or whatever just with your favorite songs and those are the bunch of songs that you're going to work on. Okay, tip six is make sure your bass is set up well. The number of basses I've seen and played that that just sound terrible and are really, really hard is mainly due to the action, which is the height of the bottom of the string to the top of the fret. And if action is high and you're, you're starting, you're going to be fighting the bass and it's going to be hard to push down. It's hard anyway, but you're making it much more difficult by basically having a bass that's set up badly. Doesn't mean the bass needs to be expensive at all. You can get a cheap bass, set it up well, and it will play brilliantly. So again, I'll put a link to a really, really great video by the guys at Federa of a just a method that you can go through to learn to do it yourself or you know if it seems a bit tricky a little bit daunting for now just take it to your local shop it's worth a little outlay on price that you'll have to pay then just to have your base kind of serviced in such a way that you'll be able to pick it up and it will be effortless and easy to play you definitely need to learn the major and the natural minor scales so much of music theory is really easy to explain only if you know those two scales, the most sort of building blocks of theory, really. And if theory is difficult for you, then it's maybe you might have missed this step out of learning a scale. So learn it for that reason, but also because 80% of the bass lines you're going to want to play are coming from something from the major scale or the natural minor scale. There are loads of other scales and loads of other things you can do, but you know, modes, major scale modes come from the major scale. So it's really important to learn that. So one octave C major scale. <laughs> And, you know, you have this kind of. You know, I'm just making up a bass line using entirely and exclusively only notes from that C major scale. And then you got the relative minor of that. Don't worry if you don't know what that means. And that goes like this. 
you've got your bright, happy major scale and your slightly darker natural minor scale. And that's used a lot in rock. <laughs> Especially A minor is good because it's got an open string so you can do kind of open string and go along the same string and that, that sounds really cool. Then you've got pentatonic scales and that just comes from the major scale and the natural minor scale. Pent means five, so the major scale and the natural minor scale, if you go back and play those, they have seven different notes. You take two of them away and you get a pentatonic scale. Now these really are used so much, it's a bit of a bass player's secret weapon. <laughs> It's really useful in a band situation or a recording situation to be able to recreate a very wide range of tones. And you know that phrase, tone comes from your hands. Now you've got effects pedals and amps and basses and they definitely do have a huge part to play in your tone. But if you can learn just simple finger style, slap and plectrum, then you have many, many more options. So, you know, we've already done some, some um, finger style stuff today and I've shown you a little bit of that but you know slap you know I'm not doing anything too you know fancy there just playing a, you know C in an octave that's the slap and that's the pop I'm muting to make sure nothing is ringing I'm not doing anything fancy for now just forget all that just keep it really simple stay in the groove i mean most of the time you're playing bass that's what everyone's going to want you to do is play in time stick to a groove and and play sim simply but you know if called upon it's nice to be able to play at least a bit of slap then you know you got a plectrum just same simple kind of things <laughs> You got upstrokes and you got com you know combination. You can do alternate picking, whichever technique you're doing. Make sure that your your timing is consistent. Your volume between different upstrokes, downstrokes, or index middle fingers is all consistent. You know, slap. You've got a bit of a dynamic range. But the point is, these are techniques and you've got to be in control of this. So really think about that. Start all of these things slowly, but the more you add in, I think the more that you can do, you know, pick and mute. Palm mute. All of them just different tones in a tonal palette. Now tip three was don't give yourself too much to learn, but there is a situation where you can maybe kill two birds with one stone. And I wrote a whole book on this, just musical exercises that you can use to incorporate new techniques, but also, you know, working on timing as well. So, I mean, this one I've got here is something I've used for, for years. I mean, over two decades. And it's a very, very simple, Going through a major scale and harmonizing each note, I say simple, uh, it sort of blew my mind when I, when I first learned this when I was a teenager, that harmony even existed. You had a major scale and on each note of the major scale you got a different arpeggio. Play those, ar those notes together you get a chord. So uh, from a bass player's point of view I was playing single notes and you will be playing single notes as well. But you can convert these into chords. So this is a technique exercise, I'm using all my different fingers, you know, really um, coordinating both of them, but also it's a theory thing as well. So, mm. 
mix it up a bit. So I mean, that's the basis of songs is where you're taking arpeggios uh, or chords and you're instead of going up like an exercise as I did before, you mix it and move it around a bit and you know that's music. There's the basis of composing, making up your own bass lines, all that good stuff. Talking of creating your own bass lines and improvising, I think a really good place to start with that is a 12 bar blues. There are lots of different forms of blues and there are jazz blues which are a little bit more complicated but I think just to get the basic 12 bar form down it's a fantastic thing to do. You play it a lot in jam nights and also, you know, when people are doing sound checks and things, people call the blues, you know, so it's a good thing to know. And you can play plenty of shapes over it, the minor ones, major ones. And also it give, introduces you to the shuffle feel. Many blues is kind of in, with that shuffle feel. But you can really, really start to improvise over this form. And then, you know, blues is kind of the basis for jazz. So you kind of branch out a bit from that. Think of time as being on a grid. So if you think about bars and beats, you've got one, two, three, four. And if you think about it, you're going to be playing a note somewhere within that grid, either on the beat or somewhere in between. So you've got to have a real hold of it. You've got to know what beat you're on at every point. So it's a really, really important thing to do to be able to tap your foot. And I remember vividly the first time I was told that and I tried it and I thought that's going to be easy and it just it just wasn't easy. I, I sort of followed the bass line I was playing rather than just keeping strict time. Now start with four taps, okay? And just start with with quarter notes. You can use a metronome if you feel comfortable with that, but but forget that for now, just try and get this together. And then you can try different rhythms. All the while keeping that going, keeping your grid and your reference point. That is your reference point. Also, it's great for reading because you need to be able to see a note on the page and play it in relation to a beat and your foot really helps. And when your foot comes up, you're playing the, the upbeat, the second qua uh, quaver or eighth note of a beat. So it really helps to kind of lock in with that. Then you can start some more kind of syncopated rhythms. Maybe even bring in a scale. Really having a sense of timing and groove and feel, it comes from your internal clock. And I think that comes from you know, nodding your head and tapping that foot. Uh, note on metronomes, don't ever use a metronome until you're comfortable with you know, your technique and, and you're relaxing your shoulders and everything like that, because it just brings in an extra bit to worry about. But do bring it in once you've got decent technique, once you know the bass line, once you know your notes and stuff, then you can start to bring in metronomes and you'll be really in the groove. But really learn to tap your foot. You need small wins when you start, so you need to play, I think it helps to play anyway, simple, famous tunes that you know and your friends and family know and you can kind of impress them with that and impress yourself. So I've got nine here, stuff like uh, Under Pressure. If you don't know that tune, you should listen to it, but if you do know it, I mean, you'll know it just from the first couple, it's only two notes anyway. And something like that's quite nice and simple, or uh, The Chain. Another John Deacon Queen bass line. Another one where you know it in two seconds flat. So I've got the tab there for you just to look at and just, you know, at least you'll have nine simple bass lines that you'll be able to work on. You'll be proud of yourself that you've actually been able to play something. 
none of this matters a little bit if you don't have an established practice routine. When I was teaching in schools, I saw loads of people that absolutely loved the bass. They loved it. They loved the idea of being good at the bass, but they loved the idea more than the actual application. And so, you know, we've all got different things that we're doing. You know, life takes over. We've got all kinds of jobs and, and what have you. But you don't need to do much. Just start off five minutes every day, every single day. And what you're doing by doing that is establishing the routine and it will grow from there. Consistency is key. You know, do five minutes every day rather than one hour once a week because it's important for your muscle memory. Muscle memory is where your hands just know what to do when you do something over and over and over and over again. It's all about repetition, but building a practice routine is key to you becoming a great bass player. So going on from that practice routine, this is a really, really simple tip. Now, this is my studio. I do YouTube videos here and I do a lot of recording for people behind me with this setup. And you know, I've got two bases there. I've got load behind there you can't see. But, you know, many times I'm in a different room in my flat now. And what I've done is this. I've put a base just behind the chair. It's really easy to grab. It's got a metronome on it. And I don't even plug it into, a, into an amp or I've got this Zoom b3n which sometimes if i want to you know create you know cool sounds and and put orcs in and and you know, practice along to songs that's great but the point is it, there's no case there it's just ready to go and there's absolutely zero barrier to picking up the bass and playing and you've got to remove those barriers okay so make it incredibly incredibly easy for you to pick up your bass and play start off by learning the names of the open strings e a d g learn the notes up to the third fret you know keep it small to start with but eventually you're going to want to learn all the notes there are patterns here so make sure you watch the video link in the description because i say learn the notes i also mean learn the patterns because once you get it this becomes something that looks really confusing just a bunch and a mass of wood and metal it becomes incredibly clear you know i showed you an octave pattern earlier two across two down so if you know one of those notes you know the name of the other because the octaves are the same same note so it really really is about learning patterns as well as learning the notes so i'll just demonstrate something i'm just going to mess around with something in the key of c and just show you how i'm doing that So, I mean, that's an octave there. I know that to C, I know that to C. I also know the fretboard. This is a bit of a gray area. A lot of people ignore this part of the neck, but you shouldn't. You should learn all parts of the neck. There's a C right there. Now the 12th fret is the same as the open string. Where that double dot is. So those are both Ds, I'm on the D string. So I know that if I go back, I'll get to the C. And that comes from knowing the notes on the piano. So check out that lesson. I go through it really, really clearly. And don't underestimate how powerful it is to learn all the notes across the neck. You'll be able to then suddenly play rather than just here. A lot of stuff does take place down there, and that's great. But you want to unlock the whole thing. That starts with learning your notes. I started playing bass when I was 11. I got pretty good pretty quickly, and I think a lot of that was down to technique. I had been playing classical guitar and I, I didn't make the connection till years later but it's the same technique so my very first bass lesson I could play the bass and that led to you know me thinking it was easy and enjoying it and, and all that kind of stuff so I was a bit lucky in that kind of regard but I knew nothing about music theory for the next seven years I would say I got pretty good but my technique really carried me and also I had a decent enough ear but it got to the point where you know other musicians I wanted to become professional and other musicians better than me were just playing stuff that that I couldn't catch you know uh, with different modes there was something with a Dorian mode I didn't, I didn't know what that was you know I only knew a major and a minor scale which I did teach you before but they got to a point where I just thought I have to learn what this stuff means. You know, I kept on bumping into musicians that were just talking a different language. So just for that reason, I needed to learn music theory. But when I did that, I was just able to to use the good ear and use the technique and then use the theory. And it just opened up an entire universe of music for me. You know, modes, rhythms, arpeggios, triads. You can play so much stuff with this. So I'll just quickly show you 
this little chord progression I've got here. And it's just going from a five to a four chord. And all that means is that there's two chords that belong to a major key. And over the five and over the four, you can play different, different modes. And if you understand that, you can play loads of fills. And in this demo here, I'm probably gonna be overplaying, but it'll just give you a flavor of, of what music theory can do for you. You don't need to know what to play. Just listen to the greatest players ever and model what they do. Copy them. If you've got a bit of technique and you've got a bit of theory, then you can piece together and analyse what they're doing. And you're almost getting a lesson from the very, very greatest players every time you listen to a bass line. And really, that's the way to get better, is to just look at this list here. I've got a load of bass players that you can just start to listen to. And they're all playing the same notes, but they're just doing different things with them, you know, different rhythms, different touches, different articulations, different ways of playing. You can never get bored and you can never ever have, you know, nothing to play if you if you listen. I would urge you to do just that. Listen, try not to go onto tab sites because that's going to deny you the chance to work on your ear. It's difficult now because you've got the internet, you've got people like me telling you how to play things. You know, I gave you tab earlier, which maps out exactly how to do those riffs. All very well and good. It's a great time to be learning. But if I could urge you to just get that playlist together, as I mentioned before, and just start using your ear, you know, take a tiny section. And what I told you earlier on, major scale, pentatonic scales, they use so much in tunes. And you you don't need me to tell you that. You need to realise that yourself. And when you do, you can start to hear that and you can start to play bass lines much better. And these are the people that are going to teach you more than anyone. Don't wait till you're an expert. Join a band now. There is a massive difference between people you hear playing on Instagram and YouTube and what you actually play in a, in a, in a band. I mean, I'm guilty of it. When I'm teaching you I sometimes have to pull out something that's a bit busy, a bit overplayed, you know, partly because people like to listen to that and partly because, you I don't know, you feel you have to. But really, listen to great bass playing. It's often simple stuff. I mean, of course, there is the amazing stuff, and it's cool to do that. We all love to do that. But when you're playing in a band, you'll realise that overplaying is not something that's that you want to do. And you'll realise that what it is that band members want from you and it's just to be in the groove play with tone time taste touch the t's great feel as well and you'll only know that if you're in a band situation yes you might be throwing yourself in the deep end a bit but if you're rehearsing there's no pressure there you can make the mistakes there and you'll know exactly what you need to play and work on for next time there's something magical that happens when you when you throw yourself into that situation there's a little bit of pressure there good pressure that just makes you learn quicker and so i really recommend doing that join a band so the last tip is to record yourself playing it doesn't have to be a very elaborate setup at all it could be your iphone garage band or, or or daw whatever you have logic cubase whatever the point is that if you're in the midst of practice, you don't have the objective kind of wherewithal to, to check that you're doing everything right and to check that everything's, you know, in time. So the good thing about recording yourself, especially if it is on something like Logic, is that you could put even just use the click and just record yourself at different tempos and listen back. And that can be a harsh experience when you listen back to yourself. But I think that's the point. One common thing you might, you know, you might hear just strings ringing out and that's because maybe you haven't worked on muting muting is just controlling the strings ringing when you don't want them to ring that's a really common thing you hear if you record yourself play but actually in the in the moment you don't really notice that you know maybe you're fretting not behind the fret as you should maybe you're fretting there and yeah it doesn't sound great but you might have missed that in the moment so recording yourself playing is a really good thing to do you don't have to take these tips in any particular order. I just wanted to give you 
kind of as much value as I can think of for, you know, if you're just starting or even if you've been playing for a while and maybe you've picked up sloppy techniques or you used to play ages ago. You know, these are really good things to do in no particular order. But I think a lot of playing bass is just getting into really, really good habits and, and kind of doing the same things, but do these simple things and do them well. So take all of these at your own pace. Make sure you save the video. There's a ton of stuff to go through and extra things as well. And, you know, I've got links in the description, so so go through some of those as well in your own time. I've also got a post that I'll send you to. It's called 100 Pro Bass Tips. Now, this isn't videos. It's just a load of very, very short tips that might, you know, inspire you to, to get to the next level. But I hope you got something from that video. And if you did, please subscribe for, you know, future videos on all kinds of different things. And if you've got any questions, do let me know. Thanks for watching.